different. Welcome today in our uh, new Dowland Healthcare uh, session. I hope you can hear my voice. Uh, I think you do, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but if you don't, please uh, give me a signal that you can't hear my voice. It should be recording anyway. I have a earphone, so I'm modernizing it. It has microphones inside uh, to make sure that my neighbors are not too much troubled by my talking to the microphone. Very nice. We are going to talk today about something that is bothering a lot of people, namely a stiff neck. I don't know if you have any stiff neck, but if you do have a stiff neck sometimes, uh, there might be several reasons for that. And we can divide uh, basically stiff neck and painful neck in uh, two different categories. And we're going to go talk about one very specific category and not the other one. There is one which is, for instance, related to when you catch a cold or a flu or something, which is uh, mainly caused by wind and draft that is uh, affecting your uh, your uh, neck and uh, causing you to catch that cold, of course. But the one we are talking about now is the one that is caused by infections in the muscles around the neck or because of a trauma as a result of an accident or something. Uh, these kind of uh, pains are terrible and uh, as a result of that they build up all kind of tension in the body and as a result of this kind of things uh, you might even end up with having a headache or uh, other issues. You might have difficulties with turning or uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, wobbling your neck and as a result of that uh, you might have uh, communication problems uh, but also a lot of discomforts, for instance, when you're sleeping or when you're sitting or when you're sitting behind your computer or your office uh, uh, cubicle might actually be the cause of this problem because of long time sitting in the wrong position. And in that case, uh, it would, of course, be a bigger issue. Well, again, uh, let me know if uh, the microphone is on. I hope it is um, because I can't really see or hear anything with these things in my ear. About what is happening on the phone. When we are talking about uh, neck problems, then at that moment uh, you see very often that there is pain on the both sides of the neck and whether it is through trauma or because of uh, what is called uh, cold or heat, dampness on your neck, uh, in both cases uh, the result will be painful and uh, it feels like stiff and it can radiate outward all the way to your arms or to your scapula, your shoulder blades. It can radiate even to your chest sometimes and it can radiate out into your head. So that means it has quite far-reaching results. You see very often when people sit behind their desk, they lean forward and they hold their head up sometimes uh, with as a result that uh, mostly the second or the third vertebra is uh, leaning a little bit inwards. And this also can cause uh, problems but we're not going to talk about that right now. In general, there is the advice for a problem like this to hold up the head so that you feel that with your attention you lift up your head and as a result of that uh, make your muscles hang a little bit below there so that your muscles can relax and can stretch and that uh, build up of trauma and tension can go away. Hi Min, welcome. Uh, when that is uh, happening, of course, your muscles might get swollen or might get uh, contracted. Uh, both is uh, possible and, of course, it's not very convenient. What we're going to do is a few very simple practices uh, through which you can resolve this issue. And one of the first practices that we have to do is what is called uh, getting into the Qigong state. Uh, that is very important because that basically sets up the foundation Hi Jan, uh, it sets the foundation for uh, the improvement of the situation. You have to understand when you practice Qigong, you try to get into a neutral state. Um, when people say that they experience a lot of energy during Qigong, that is because of the problems that their body has. In an ideal situation, according to the Qigong theory, you wouldn't feel anything. You wouldn't feel your pains, you wouldn't feel uh, your problems because they simply are not there you certainly would, wouldn't feel any energy flow through your body uh, because the body becomes completely neutral. From testing with EEGs, 
uh, they find that when people are in a too cool state and they practice properly, then at that moment the EEG flattens out so that the impulse actually becomes less. When uh, they do galvanic testing from the skin, they see that the electrical potential and the magnetic potential of your skin also neutralizes and they find that your blood pressure generally lowers. That means that when you feel more mental amplitude or you feel the electrical tension rise, this is not because of energy, but it is because of trauma, because of problems in the body, uh, which are generally being considered as being the heating up of the body, the building up of blood pressure, and as a result of that, the cause of possible infections, uh, in some cases hallucinations, or in worst cases uh, psychotic attacks. So there's a lot of different kind of reasons to stay away from these kinds of experiences and calm yourself so that your body actually can do the job that it is meant for, namely self-repairing. That is a function of the kidneys and the dantian. And the dantian is the only place where things polarize because it has to work as an engine, make the chi and the blood flow into your body. And even the chi, in, the flow of the chi and the blood should not be felt if your body is properly healthy. So that is a very important part <coughs> to understand. It's the same when you're doing Tai Chi Chuan, you're doing Tai Chi Chuan, you don't really feel uh, the energy of things. Uh, what you feel is the Jin, that is the force of your body, that means the coordination of your muscles to create a particular kind of strength. That is not exactly the same. At the moment when you talk about the Chi of uh, something, that means that it has to be clear what you are at that moment doing. And that is basically a visual appearance of something. Um, on the other hand, in Tai Chi Chuan, you very often you want to appear a little bit ambiguous. Uh, so as a result of that, your move shouldn't be too clear and too pronounced. It is not a cartoon that you are playing, that you are playing Tai Chi Chuan. And it's also not Wu Shu, which is more for the aesthetics of things nowadays, uh, since it has been engineered to be competitive instead of uh, functional. When we talk about this neck issue and we come talk about the Qigong state and what you first want to do, I hope you can see my feet. Uh, you stand in your feet shoulder wide and you hold your hands a little bit up and you lift yourself up at the base of the skull. You lift yourself up behind the heart and between the kidneys so that the, all the muscles and the vertebrae below there, they hang a little bit and you stand on your heels. This is the normal uh, stance for uh, Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong uh, to start with and you make your fingers a little bit long and you make your toes a little bit long. Now the next thing that you do is to just gently breathe. Try to breathe as superficially as possible. Try to fill up your whole lungs by breathing slowly but deeply. But try to afford, make no effort in your breathing and try to breathe as um, shallowly, you can say, uh, as you can so that you neutralize all feelings in your body and your mind. That your sense organs find peace and your muscles also find peace. As a result of that, you free up your muscles and your blood vessels so that the chi and the blood can circulate more naturally. One of the things you might feel when you hold part of your tension in Yang Tian is that the Yang Chi rises up in the Dumai as a warmth. This is the steam of the water in your body going up to the spinal fluids. And at the moment when that happens, and at that moment you also might feel that you're being pushed forward a little bit and use your toes to push yourself back a little bit uh, so that you stay in your heels. Thank you for the light. Keep your eyes open, try not to blink. At the moment when you're calm and you regulate yourself, you slowly slow your pace. So you become more like nature. Nature itself is very slow. Nothing in nature goes very fast, except, you know, uh, killing something when you're hungry. But this is not what we're doing right now, but we are trying to get healthier. So at once when you stand like that, then at that moment you make your right hand into a fist and you relax your fist, so that your fist actually becomes a little bit like a loose stick. But you have to make sure that at the moment when you make this fist, your fingers are still touching the base of the thumb and your uh, thumb is against the index finger so that you have a loose and relaxed what is called a Tai Chi fist. At the moment when you do like that, you lift up your left arm and you softly pound those down. And you do this a few times. You can start all the way in your shoulders if you want. 
and you might feel as a result that pressure in your head already becoming less and pressure in your neck maybe already less and then after you've done that you turn your hand inside out and you do the same on the inside this is just to pound the flesh and the channels a little bit blue so that the yin channels and the yang channels can actually more freely circulate there's also a large artery system going through your arms which is very important for your general circulation in your body so uh, as a result of that you also get more free circulation you will release the tension of your heart so you do this also a few times say three to nine times you do this so we do this in the class now only three times to make sure that we do not waste too much of your time because we have only about a half hour and make sure you keep on breathing slowly Keep your fingers a little bit long so that it doesn't become too passive and because you have to create circulation you see that a lot of people they build up and they have a higher blood pressure because of whatever kind of problem in the neck they build up tension in their lower arms and as a result of that they also might develop RSI more quickly and the next thing that we're going to do is we take the flat arm and we rub down and you have to make sure you rub down at least nine times if you do 15 times it's also fine this is called the dredging now at this moment you're dredging the channels you go down you don't want to rub too hard because you want to be kind to your arms you want to guide basically so you could call this a guiding practice and the same on the inside of the arm this is a qigong self massage now we do a whole series of that um, soon hope to start a program for learning this qigong where you go through all the different kind of parts of your body uh, which you can use as a foundation for skills like this so that you can start your own medical qigong clinic medical qigong isn't that difficult as long as you keep track of a few simple basic principles one of them i explained before try to avoid the use of the concept of energy because it is no use to use there is no explanation for energy in qigong other than as a disease making factor <coughs> feels good i hope it feels good feels very calming of course all right how did that feel okay very good at the moment when you feel good with that make sure you afterwards you massage the whole good point so you do this you slowly breathe One more time. Make sure you breathe slowly, don't stop breathing even when it hurts. Now we go back to the arms again. And every time when you go down, you also breathe out. So you do slowly breathe out. Breathe out. Breath normally should be shorter than the in breath. This is just for the simple reason that then it means that you are economically viable in breathing. That means you lose a lot of your breath. Not when your out breath is longer, uh, there is more like a release factor because you're over pressured. Okay. Also, on the inside, breathe out. on the other side Sure you keep on standing on your heels and you keep your neck and your back long okay and the inside 
breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. All right, very good. Once you have done that, one more time, massage the focal points, the large intestine four points. While. See that you move around about 36 times with your thumb, so that makes your thumbs make circles around this point. It's about halfway of the bone of the between the root of the index finger and the root of the thumb. And then you do the same on the other side. isn't it? Yeah, taking care of yourself is a slow process and at the moment when you're busy doing it you have to really appreciate slowness because if you are too much in a hurry then at that moment it becomes annoying. At the moment when you enjoy the slowness too much you start to become high and that means you produce too many dopamines and that means also you create fire inside yourself. You feel of course great but uh, yeah, you also make yourself into a Qigong junkie. Uh, there is also the risk for anybody who's trying to produce energy in their body when they practice Qigong. Like I explained earlier, that is the opposite of what you want to achieve. And at that moment you take your elbow, this is uh, called uh, bent point. This is where the joint of the uh, elbow is and the fold of your wrist. And you take the point more or less at the end, you just hold your sides and you massage here also about 11 times. For many people this is a sensitive spot. At the moment when you feel it's sensitive then it is high time if you do this practice. It's a very simple practice. Keep on breathing slowly. Hold part of your attention if you don't can. Alright, and also go to the other side. In the meantime, while I'm doing this, I can press a few waves. My magpie is uh, back to nature, so unfortunately today there are quite a lot of uh, beetles here. She would have had a feast here eating from the floor. Let me go back again to the focal point. It's the time of the year where these things all come out. side. So we can stand here for a while again, put these stands, check how we are feeling. At the moment when we also have this accompanied with uh, the headaches and at that moment we can take our fingers from our forehead and it's sometimes helpful to have a little bit of oil on your fingers but then you scratch out, out like this, and then you go all the way behind your ears and go downward. It's probably will disturb the sound of my ear things, but what can I say? You also do this about 30 times, 35 times. Get the idea from this, of course.
<coughs> then after you're finished you go stand with your feet shoulder wide you're standing on your heels go backwards a little bit and you spread out your fingers and you go back to a Wuji stance Again, you stand like this for a few minutes, you regulate your breathing. After you're finished, you put your hands on the dantian, you press slightly to make sure that you really focus on the dantian. And of course, it would be great if the whole way through you can focus part of your attention on the dantian, so that you continuously, consciously activate the engine of the chi of the blood inside your body. And as a result, that you lower, breath, you lower your blood pressure and you release also your heart. So that all kinds of anxieties also can be reduced. What is very important? Just take this kitchen chair for this purpose. At the moment when you're sitting, make sure you're sitting always straight up. So if you're typing, make sure your hands are at the level of your diaphragm so that your keyboard is a little bit lower than that. But make sure you're also outstretched and that you really stretch out like that. And every say half hour just give yourself a little bit of space and rest like that if you do the exercises like i did before sitting then make sure you leave your hand on your knee and you press outward like this and also on the other side you lean outward like this you can just put your hands on your knee so it makes it a little bit easier and to do it while you're working and nobody is watching but make sure you sit straight during all your working hours because that makes that the pulsating effect of any kind of tension which is a little bit like a stone being thrown into a pond so it ripples outwards and can cause all kinds of other effects elsewhere in your body because of there being tension too and then stagnating in other places and causing all kinds of other secondary complaints one very famous complaint is lower back pain um, which is a completely different kind of issue of course we can talk about that another time if you want <coughs> but at the moment when you're sitting that means you're sitting forward and you're sitting straight and make sure you don't lean against anything uh, i always say that leaning against something is inviting issues uh, with your back and your neck so make sure you do not lean against anything when you're sitting at your desk also don't sit with your legs crossed uh, because there are a lot of things which can happen as a result of cross-legged sitting. Make sure your knees are a little bit outward. And I know, of course, for women it is expected to have their knees together, but uh, yeah, maybe better not wear a skirt, uh, maybe wear trousers so that it doesn't as bad. Uh, sit like this, just simply for health reasons. Uh, if you want to be angry with me because I advise to wear trousers on a skirt, uh, of course the choice is up to you uh, it doesn't really matter that much but at all when you sit like that uh, you can do a lot more work also when you watch tv or when you are eating make sure you do not lean backwards uh, you do not hang out on a sofa or anything like that and when you are sleeping try to sleep on your back with your neck flat so that everything falls into the right place make sure that when you go down you you go lie down by rolling backwards and then gradually uh, becoming flat out of course uh, on the bed so that your neck is being stretched push out your heels a bit and then just fall asleep that's basically it what they did in china and japan in the past they made a hard roll very often made of stone or wood uh, jade stone for instance and they put it below their neck so that the neck could actually be a little bit stretched and to prevent the wind coming in but also to relax trauma from the neck so these kind of things they can also be very helpful um, when you lie down your head in a soft pillow what's the use of a soft pillow because then you're going to be flat anyway so you can just as well take it away the only thing that pillows and blankets and in general uh, especially feather blankets produce is uh, hot dampness 
and that can actually cause you all kind of problems especially when you also sleep with open or closed windows so you see you cannot do it right that is basically the biology of things human society produces all kind of things that is in conflict with our human uh, needs our biological needs and our animal needs of course and as a result of that we have all kind of health issues just simply because of our lifestyle so that means that you have to continuously compensate and qigong provides a lot of these compensations uh, it is also admonishing to go back to a more natural lifestyle so try to get rid of everything that you can get rid of uh, that you do not really need in your house that you really have to use your body to do all kind of things it really makes such a big difference from your health so don't have a washing machine uh, <laughs> of course you need a lot of time if you have to do all your laundry by yourself but certainly don't have a dishwasher uh, it's a simple thing but besides wasting a lot of water um, besides not really cleaning very much uh, besides using all this electricity and so on uh, it is just healthier for yourself to wash things you just collect some water in a, in a thing and you wash things and you actually move your whole body and uh, because you're holding your hands on the down can you sink a little bit through your knees uh, you actually use your whole body to wash things and to put things out so you're reaching out make sure that things all stand a little bit out of reach so that you have to step and you have to reach out that you continuously create blood circulation don't try to make yourself comfortable if you want to take good care of your health don't have a comfortable life that is just basically the rule make sure you challenge yourself continuously and that everything what you do is a exercise this is just like a general advice uh, which is originating from the perspectives of the qigong everything in life can be a qigong as long as you do it consciously and you create a purpose for it which has to do with your health you just have to understand what you need to do to get your health going but that's what these sessions are for so if you want to help me then please uh, share this among your friends uh, make sure that they have a benefit for or that they send it to their friends um, if it goes viral here or on youtube uh, through the patreon channel where it's also going to be uh, posted that is all just great um, and it's a free service and it's important when you want to know more you're always of course free to sponsor these things uh, through our uh, patreon channel or by maybe a direct contribution if you feel like doing that uh, but the most important thing is that you share it and uh, maybe you can give it a like because then facebook helps us uh, share it too uh, then i don't have to invest in that if i want a lot of people to see it it would be best if it would be self-financing <coughs> that is of course the purpose of a lot of things in life things should be self-financing uh, so that uh, we can keep doing things from our hearts uh, well what else do I need to say well I hope you have a very nice day wherever you are uh, that there is no violence uh, there is uh, no hunger there is no disease uh, worth mentioning that you have a long and happy life and I look forward to see you next week uh, I think this week Friday where I normally also give a Q&A I think I have to give a Chungchung class it's a two hour workshop you can still sign up for the channel and to partake in that um, this is one of the options that you have at the moment when you become a sponsor you can also partake of all kinds of more complicated class forms um, um, but again I don't want to make an advertisement for that per se because that's not the purpose of this video I'm really happy that you came to listen to this and uh, I look forward to see you next time again. Uh, it was my pleasure.